Hello, hello, it's Chris and Elizabeth continuing our Global Success Summit. And we are very excited to introduce our next guest, Laura Berg. Hello, how are you? Hi, thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited for this interview. Yeah, it's uh, it's so nice to see you. Thank you for being on the Best Ever You show recently and then being on our summit as well with your new book. We get to hold that up. That's amazing. Yeah. Do you want to hold, go ahead and hold I it show up. You? Yes, Thriving Life, there it is. It's it's huge to write a book, and um, and that's a it's a great book. Um, I would love for you to just start off t start off telling us about your book. So basically, it was years in the making, uh, but I wanted to write a book where I could share the stories of my life and the the things that I had to overcome that I know other people have experienced and might be struggling with. So I wanted to kind of be a little bit open and raw in a book, but at the same time, come at it from an educated standpoint where I can give really good therapeutic advice to each chapter that I present in the book. It's, um, there's a lot, I, I really want people to know your story. I, I kind of want to pause for your story before we continue. Would that be okay? <laughs> But we only have like twenty. I know, you gotta. <laughs> but I, I think I think when we were doing the podcast, your story kind of trickled out a little bit, and yeah. then you talked. And I think it would be really nice to have that uh, right off the bat, so people kind of understand. Again, so, twenty. Yeah. Yeah, I know my <laughs> my story is very layered, but uh, yeah. the I guess the catalyst behind writing the book was I'm adopted. And I shared, I found my birth parents and I found out that they had married each other. So I thought, fantastic. They're going to open me, welcome me with open arms. And they didn't. They rejected me in the cruelest way possible. And I was 22 when I found them and I was just absolutely crushed. And so that kind of rejection it really plays on your self-esteem and your self-confidence and the way that you view yourself and the relationships you have with other people. Uh, so one year at Christmas, I was feeling a little bit feeling sorry for myself because everyone's posting really happy pictures of family. And I thought, Oh, I don't have any extended family. And you know, that's, that's near me where I can go and celebrate with them. And it, I was just having a hard time. So I posted a video explaining my story about how I felt really wounded being rejected by these people who I thought would be excited to find me. And the reason I did that was because no one in my immediate circle had experienced this form of rejection before, but I thought there has to be, there has to be other people out there who have felt this kind of hurt. And so I posted the video and I could not tell you the response I got from people was overwhelming people sharing their stories people reaching out to me saying thank you so much i felt so alone until i heard your story and it was then that i realized the value of sharing your story can really be healing to other people and so that was really the main catalyst behind writing the book awesome thank you for sharing and i know it's uh one of the hardest things is that when you feel alone and so i think it stories and sharing is so important. So I, I just that resonates with me so beautifully. Thank you for being you, Laura. Um, in the book as well, you talk about taking action. And can you talk? Can you share what that means to you? And how people can maybe take action in their own lives? Right. So I find that a lot of people uh, are their own worst enemy, you kind of get stuck in what you want to do, you think, Oh, I want this, but I can't do it because X, Y, and Z. And so, or I should say Z for the Americans listening. <laughs> Chris, I know you're over in BC, so you're used to that. Um, you know, and so taking those steps can seem really overwhelming sometimes. And so my husband once told me, if you do nothing, nothing happens. This beautiful quote. And I thought, he's so right. You have to take action in order to make things happen for yourself in life. So I talk about that in the book because a lot of my life, I waited for things to happen or I waited for opportunities to happen. And I realized those opportunities aren't going to happen unless I make them happen, unless I seek them out, unless I take those steps. So, yeah. Talk and it's, Oh, sorry. No, you go ahead. I was just going to say, it's not always easy, but Elizabeth, you take your question. Well, tell us about your life now. 
Uh, so, so now I, you know, sometimes people ask, what do you do for a living? And I don't really know how to say it all in uh, uh, one view. I just on the LinkedIn header, isn't it? Yeah, it's <laughs> like, I do this, I do that, I do this, you know, I, so I do a lot of things because I set up my life in order to be happy. Now, I don't want that to come across as you should just be happy in life because that just doesn't happen. What I mean by that is I had to kind of figure out what would make me happy in life and then strive for that. So for me, it was spending time with my family and traveling. I love, love traveling. So I've really suffered the past two years because it's been really hard being locked in the house. Uh, so I set up my life to provide me with opportunities to do that. So when I had my daughter, I wanted to stay at home with her. I was a teacher and I quit teaching and started a company. So I started a baby sign language company where I teach other moms how to sign with their babies. And uh, that company blew up into something that I never imagined would happen, but I just embraced it. Uh, then I missed teaching. So I went back to school uh, to get more experience and so that I could become a college professor so that I could work, still teach, but only work a few hours a week, which is fantastic. Uh, then I write, uh, I manage a YouTube channel where I produce video content. Uh, I do all sorts of things that just make me you happy. Speak? I do lots of speaking. I used to do so much speaking before the pandemic and flying everywhere. And I really, really enjoy that. And I really love to connect and inspire other people. And I miss that a lot. Can you, can you, thank you for sharing that. Um, I would love, I think this is going to resonate too with people a lot. Can you talk about depression and anxiety and be very candid and open like you were on the podcast about it? Because I got so many emails from people listening to you talk about that. Um, people are hurting. Yeah, people are hurting. And I think the yeah. pandemic is making things even worse for people. And I think as far as we've come talking about depression and anxiety, we're still not there. There's still a stigma behind it. And it's unfortunate. Um, I have suffered from depression since I was 16. And it's a struggle. And I've learned a lot about depression and how your brain works and how the chemicals in your brain work. And, you know, there's situational depression and what have you. But I think it's important to talk to people about, you know, the signs of depression. The number one thing that I really want everybody to understand about depression is when people are in it, when they're really in it, they cannot ask for help. Yeah. so many times I remember posting a picture of me it was me and my daughter we're at a concert and it's a beautiful picture of the two of us and we're smiling and I said this is what the face of depression looks like because I wasn't in bed I wasn't you know complaining I wasn't sort of sad faced I was putting on a happy face and going on about my life meanwhile I'm thinking I want to step in front of that truck because I cannot take another day and I, I really need people to know that you may not recognize it in people. And so many people have said after I shared that, oh, you should have told me. <laughs> you should have asked for help. I you should have called me. And I think you can't. When you're in that sort of raw fit of depression, you cannot reach out to people. So a good tip that I have is my friend and I have set this up where I will say to her, um, I'm craving fries and gravy. I'll text that to her. And so she knows that fries and gravy is my way of saying, I need help. I need you to talk to me. I need you to take me out. I need you to come over, whatever, because it's easier to ask for fries and gravy than it is for asking for help. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and it's worked. So, yeah. That's a really great tip. And I love that because it is true. Even I don't have uh, experience with depression, but I do have experience with receiving help. And it is so hard to be the receiver. And then to ask for it on top of that is just, like you said, it almost feels impossible. So I love that as a tip. And if people are listening and they need that tip, fries and gravy take over the universe because um, it's your next book, fries and gravy. It should be. Also, yeah. to, to piggyback on that, if you have somebody in your life who you're always helping because maybe they don't have family, maybe they don't have a support system like you do, but so you're, you're more than happy to offer them help. 
ask them for help as well because it makes them feel valued when you don't ask for help even if you have a big support system that you can call on you have parents grandparents aunts uncles whatever it is still it it makes the relationship balanced and it mm -hmm. makes it easier for that person to ask for help when they need it because they feel valued to you yeah we're on a success summit how hard is it to push through depression and anxiety to feel successful <sighs> there you go it's mm. it's so hard and you know i still struggle like i think i have set up my life where i have tackled things that i've wanted to tackle i've accomplished things that i wanted to accomplish i have a wonderful husband two beautiful children i've written two books i teach i'm i love my life and yet i still suffer from depression there are days where i'm still i i can't sort of function and um and so I almost got off on on uh, a tangent here because I realized what did you just say? <laughs> no. realized, I was going on and about. No, I was wondering what you just said. I want to support you right there because that's it's a and Krista's too. It's a really huge moment mm -hmm. because it's so honest. Because those are the faces that people put to their smile and their everything, yeah. and you have no idea what's going on. It's so important to know that about you. And it's yeah. so important for you to say it so people know it, so people can show up for fries and gravy or whatever it is that you need. And I without you saying it, we don't know. I mean, you yeah. just, when you, because you've got, if you look at you, if your smile is bright, you're, you know, you're, you're put together, everything, you would never go, oh, she's, you know, she's suffering from depression. You would never, ever know unless you clue us in. And that's the big part, I think, is the clue in. And that's the hard part because that's the stigma. You don't want, you're not going to open your mouth and say that because you don't want people to not like you or not accept you or not want to be around you or whatever. When in fact, we love you more. Thank you. And yeah, I, I realized that, you know, you we were saying, how can you be successful yeah, that's right. while you're going through depression? And I think it's just giving yourself, allowing yourself time to know that it's going to pass because it's really hard to, when you're in it, it, life is going to end when you're in it that's all you can see and so how do you make it to the next day and it's really about being what i do now is i'm really present with what has set me off you know why mm -hmm. am i feeling the way that i'm feeling is it maybe hormones uh did i read an email that upset me is it something my daughter said to me and i'm really trying to be present in that feeling because a lot of times we feel depressed or we feel blue, we feel sad and we just go on about our day and we just think it's going to pass or, or the world's going to end or whatever. And you don't acknowledge the thing that has made you feel the way that you're feeling. And so sitting with it has really helped me. And then thinking about it and it's uncomfortable, but recognizing that it helps you to move past it. Yeah. Chris, uh, sorry, I thought I heard something, and so I apologize. But um, I, what you were just saying there about all of those factors and recognizing and sitting with it, I think that's so important. And I wanted to ask you on that: is you know, when people say it's so hard to get what I want in life, it's impossible because of time and money and opportunity. Never mind if you have other layers like anxiety and depression and and the things coming at you. Kind of, it feels like from all sides. What advice do you give people in that? position in that position of struggle or that feeling of impossibility. Yeah, I think it's, you know, going back to us being our own worst enemy and thinking, well, I want to do this, but I can't because I don't have time. I don't have the money. I don't have the expertise. I don't have whatever it is. I say, look at things in smaller moments and smaller pictures. So for example, I wanted to write this book, I think four years ago, oh, maybe five years ago. Yeah. Um, and I thought, how am I going to do this? You know, I'm just Laura. I'm just me. And I have a story to tell. But you know what? Everyone has a story to tell. Yeah. What will give me credibility to be able to write this book? And I thought, I really want to go and get a psychotherapy degree so that I can come at it from the, the angle of being an expert in this sort of topic. Uh, and I had a job. I had have two children I'm married and I'm thinking and I want to go back to school is this impossible and so I thought well what well what options are there what baby steps can I take so I took a course 
And then I took another course. And then over the course of three years, I have a degree and I have a specialty in CBT. And I made it happen for myself because I didn't look at it, okay, I want to write a book. I, I looked at it as how can I take these baby steps to make it happen for myself? And it's not easy all the time, trust me. But if you put it in smaller and more digestible chunks, it'll be easier to obtain. Yeah. What do you what do you most hope that people learn from you? Hmm. I just hope that people learn that being the, the, really the importance of sharing our stories and sharing our failures and sharing our hurts can help other people heal in a way that you may not ever even know. You know, people who I've encountered, uh, I've maybe impacted their lives and they will never reach out to me and tell me that, but it's because I shared my story. So I really want people to understand that and for people to understand that everything we see with our friends, with our family online is fabricated to some extent. So, you know, we think, oh, that person is so perfect. Oh, they have such an ideal life. Mm -hmm. But recognizing that that they don't, like you don't know what's going on in their own personal minds, hearts, lives. And so to, to understand that we're all kind of broken, but we can still thrive in life, you know, even being broken. Yeah. Did you have a moment in your life that was um, like a, a moment where somebody else impacted you to show you to open up and share your story with other people or is there someone you follow or how did, how did it all come about where you're like, you know, I'm going to write a book and I'm going to share my story. And I, I mean, what, what's that moment? There had to be a moment somewhere. Oh, you know, I, I think of like many moments that have happened, but uh, a big moment for me was my daughter who uh, is a teenager and also has depression. Uh, she was really, really hurting and she um, hurt herself. And I thought, oh my goodness, I am not doing her justice by not speaking up about my own struggles. And so that was one major, major catalyst was was her and showing her the importance of it's okay to have depression. It's okay to have anxiety. You can still live a successful and healthy life. Mm -hmm. uh, there's nothing wrong with you. You're not broken. Uh, it's just everybody, I think everybody struggles to mm -hmm. some degree. And so she was my catalyst really. Yeah. Thank you. And I love, I have to applaud you as a fellow storyteller. I think we often, and Elizabeth, you are too, and we share from our personal lives things that we've experienced and gone through. And I often take for granted that that's a skill in itself, that not everybody is able to put a camera up and say, this is what it was like for me. This is how awful it was. This is the naked truth. And you think sometimes, oh, well, who am I? What is my story really that important? And it just, it is. And I know you talk about imposter syndrome. I think a lot of us do in this genre. Yeah, a but, lot, actually. Uh, yeah. yeah. And so I would lie to me. And so I would, I'd love to hear your take on it. And then the follow up to that is what advice do you have for people who are dealing with imposter syndrome? How do you, how do you quiet that so that you can keep going forward? It's the worst. It is literally the worst. And I will be honest with you, I still, struggle with this coming here today i was looking at all the other speakers and i'm like why do they want me like look at all of these amazing people i did the same thing and and we're running it so it's right okay. so <laughs> it's right still today experiencing <laughs> that um, conversation <laughs> oh i'm also currently i'm i'm taking a class uh, an english class and everyone went around introducing themselves and it was like phd student phd student phd student and i was just like like I just felt sort of less than everybody. We all feel that way. And it's like, it's good to acknowledge that feeling of, okay, this is just the imposter syndrome. You know, I'm being my own worst enemy right now. I have a lot of value. It's again, just sitting with it and recognizing that you're feeling the way that you're feeling and then trying to sort of be your own best friend and talk to yourself and say, you know what, you, you have a lot to say. You have a lot of value, you have a lot of worth and yeah. 
Yeah, you and I have these coffee conversations. I'm going to have one with you for a minute. You know, um, I I sometimes am, I, I look back at my own self and I go, I'm lucky to even have a college degree. If people understood what I've gone through. <laughs> I'm like, okay, I'm good. And and yet I do that too. I'll look through the list and be like, okay, PhD, PhD. I have a PhD. Did I miss the memo somewhere? And I'm like, wait a minute. I have to go back to who I am as a human being and be like, do you know how hard it was for me? And what I was going through and what my family was going through and everything. No one asked that. Yeah. It, there's, not, there's a story that goes with my college degree, uh, you know. And yeah. so I think be really proud of who you are, where you are, when you are, how you are, everything. Just you're perfectly exactly enough, please. <laughs> <laughs> if you get lost in that messaging, remind yourself. Yeah, I will. I'll just, I'll arrange another coffee day with you, Elizabeth. Yeah, yeah and Chris. <laughs> you can, can, Chris can, is can, yeah. Can we can we travel? Hop over to BC. Hop over to I BC. Will. Well. I know I have to come over. <laughs> You're invited. Um, you. I think one of the other things too. This makes me think about how we interact with people that we don't know on a daily basis. Because you don't know, you know, you're at that concert, Laura, you're smiling, you're putting on the brave face, you're going, yeah, don't know. And and so how we interact with people, because you don't know if they are dealing with depression, anxiety, if someone just passed away, if they're having the worst day of their life. And I just wanted to take this opportunity to remind people to be mindful of that. Yes. Be kind. Everybody you treat when you encounter people we'll get a little preachy on this one sorry but when you encounter people treat them with the put the kid gloves on yeah. in a way and be kind to everybody treat them with a sense of grace and compassion collaboration even sweetness and so forth because you have absolutely no idea what the other person has been through is going through yeah. is gonna go through any of it and that is for everybody. I just, I get preachy on that one. I I'll never forget the lady. My dad had just died mm -hmm. and I, and I flew back home here to Maine and I went to get groceries and I, you know, that foggy feeling where you're just like something bad's happened, but you got to go do what you got to do. And I didn't know I was standing over pears crying. I, mean, <laughs> I literally was standing over pears and tears were flowing. And this lady came up to me. I've never seen her again. I wish if you're listening, please come back to me. I want to give you a hug now. She's like, can I give you a hug? And I'm like, and this wasn't during COVID. And I'm like, uh, yeah, actually you can. She's like, which one of your parents just died? And I'm like, how do you know that? And she goes, the look and feel and vibe of you is unmistakable. Somebody around you, very important, has just died. I'm guessing it's your, one of your parents. She gave me the biggest hug. She's like, it's going to be all right. That's amazing. I don't know who that was, what angel it was, or who it was, or what I've wow. never seen her again. I go up to Shaw's looking for her sometimes. I'm like, where are you? That's so beautiful. <laughs> yeah. And it's such a valid point to oh, share. Yeah. And even just to think about how you never know what other people are going through. Just, I have a similar story, but not as beautiful. <laughs> when my mom died, I was just devastated and crushed. And I, couldn't leave the house for weeks. And when I finally left the house, I, I was walking my daughter, she was in the stroller and I was numb, yeah. numb. And she, just a person passed me and they stepped to the side cause it was garbage day. And I didn't even notice, I didn't even notice. And he turns to me and he says, you're welcome. And then a really not nice thing to call a person. And I just started crying and I thought, no. I don't need this right now. Like I need people to be tender to me. So you never know what people are going through. Yeah, exactly. Beating past you or what? Yeah. Any of it. So yeah. Anyway. All right. <sighs> I feel better having said that. Okay. Yeah. It's so crazy. <laughs> okay. it's, 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 we're passionate about it. It's a, it's a passion moment to, to, to just remind people and stuff. Um, let's go back to you um, and talk about, what do you want to talk about, Chris? We talk about like you're you're an entrepreneur in your own right with all the things you've done. That YouTube channel is insane. I mean, exactly. that is so. Talk about you want to talk about that your YouTube channel? Uh, <laughs> sure. I mean, I started a YouTube channel as a way to support my business, and it grew into I think I have almost three hundred thousand followers now, and it's it's this beautiful community and. Uh, I now, you know, talk, do a lot of talks or a lot of videos with my daughter and we talk about things that are hard for parents and teenagers to go through and try and help shed some light into what it's like being a teenager in today's day and age. And yeah, so I just basically post videos to share about our life and our experience. Mm -hmm. 
And what a big commitment for that. And so, I mean, if somebody is out there listening and they are thinking about wanting to start a business, what advice would you give? And I know we're getting short on time here now. So yeah, yep. let's give us one or two tips, maybe nutshell. Something. Yeah, it's just taking action, make, making the steps to do something. When I started my business, it wasn't the first business I started. I first started selling clothes on eBay and I realized, well, Chris, you know this, how expensive it is to ship anything from Canada to anywhere else. That's why I'm giving you a wave. Hi. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. Uh, and I also realized I hate shopping. So that was not a viable business idea for me. So threw that in the trash. Then I thought, oh, I'm going to do like pregnant belly casting for pregnant women. And then I realized, well, I have zero artistic talent, so I can't do that. So I threw that out. But it was just taking action. I tried this, didn't work. What's next? Going to do that until I found something and uh, that I loved and was successful. But it's about taking action and making yeah. it. Yeah, and keeping going. I hear you talking about your failures, which has also been a recurring theme throughout this conference. Not succeeding, trying something else, figuring out what you don't want to do, and all of that. So I love that advice. Just yeah. just keep going. Yeah. Um, before we wrap up with you, is there? I'm gonna I'm gonna get you to give us your website here. But is there anything else you'd like to share that we haven't covered? Oh, geez, I'm sure there's a lot. We're just gonna have to chat more at another time, Chris. <laughs> but no, we, we've covered a lot today. Yeah. What's your website again? It's Laura Berg Inc. So I N C dot com. Perfect. Laura, it's a pleasure having you with us. Thank you. And uh, best of luck with your, your new book. Thank and, you. Uh, and we hope you'll come back to our summits and best ever you and write articles and all that good stuff. So it's been fun having you. Anytime. Anytime. Thank you guys so much. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye for Thank now. You. Bye.